Have you ever just been stopped in your tracks by something beautiful? You know, a sunset, a piece of music, a person, or maybe a painting? Well, that feeling is way more than just an emotion. There's an incredible hidden science of how beauty actually impacts our minds, our bodies, and even our DNA. Let's start with something you can imagine. You're standing beneath the Sistine Chapel. The ceiling stretches above you, every detail alive with color and meaning. Around you, people from every corner of the world stare upward. Some weep, some smile, some just stand frozen, lost in awe. No phones, no distractions, just pure presence. At this very moment, inside their brains, something extraordinary is happening. Their bodies are calm, but their minds are awake, and in fact, more alive than ever. It turns out the feeling of wonder isn't just a sensation, no, it's a specific, measurable, and fascinating neurological event. It turns out that your brain is hardwired for beauty. Back in 2004, researchers put people into brain scanners and showed them a bunch of beautiful images. And what they saw was amazing. A specific region lit up the medial orbitofrontal cortex, part of the brain's beauty center. Research shows that our brains recognize beauty in milliseconds, long before conscious thought has time to form. So before thought, before words, the brain knows beauty the second we see it. This isn't preference or opinion or a choice, it's instinct, we just know. Now, is there a kind of beauty that speaks to all of us? If our brains have a built-in beauty detector, is there some kind of universal pattern it's looking for? Well, the answer seems to be a big yes. And that takes us to one of nature's most mysterious codes. It all comes down to this one number, 1.618. This is the golden ratio, the so-called divine proportion, a formula hidden in plain sight. Think of a line, cut it in two pieces, if the short piece fits into the long one, the same way the long one fits into the whole line, then that's your golden ratio. It's a balance that feels natural, not too equal, not too lopsided, just right. And the breathtaking part is, this ratio is everywhere. The curl of an ocean shell, the swirl of a galaxy, the seeds of a sunflower, even the architecture of our own face. For centuries, painters, sculptors, and architects used it sometimes consciously, sometimes instinctively, because it just looked right. But this isn't just art or chance. Neuroscience shows that our brain recognizes shapes built on the golden ratio instantly. Shapes built on the golden ratio are processed faster, smoother, and more fluently. They feel natural, comforting, and pleasurable. It just feels right. Our brain itself is hardwired to respond to this secret signature of beauty. But this code of beauty isn't just out there in the world, it's in our DNA. Maybe beauty runs even deeper than we realize, right down to the code of life. DNA, the double helix that makes us who we are, spirals in dimensions of 34 by 21 angstroms. 34 and 21 are both numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, a sequence that leads straight to the golden ratio. So just think about that for a second. The same mysterious proportion that shapes seashells, sunflower spirals, galaxies, and cathedral arches is ingrained into your very own biology. It isn't just out there in the world, it's in you. Beauty isn't just decoration, it's written into the blueprint of life, suggesting that beauty is not a nice to have, but rather a requirement of life. A language of harmony and proportion that links nature, art, and even our DNA into one continuous design. Now, this deep connection we have to beauty actually has real, tangible, measurable effects on our health. Beauty can quite literally help us heal. Check out this famous study from 1984. In a quiet hospital in Pennsylvania, 46 patients, all recovering from the very same gallbladder surgery. Same floor, same care, and the same doctors. On paper, almost everything was identical. But there was one tiny and significant difference. Some patients were placed in rooms with a view of trees, their leaves dancing in the wind. 
The rest of the patients had windows facing a solid brown brick wall, and the results were staggering. The tree view patients healed faster, they needed less pain medication, and had fewer complications. Even their nursing notes were more positive. One window gave them nature, while the other, emptiness, and the brain and body told the difference. Since then, study after study has shown the same truth, linking natural beauty with health benefits. Even 20 minutes with nature, with trees, leaves, birds, lowers stress, strengthens immunity, and even reduces risks for heart disease and diabetes. But nature isn't the only medicine. Beautiful art can heal too. In Rome, a group of students were sent into three different museum rooms. Some saw classical figurative art, landscapes, portraits, and realism. Others wandered into modern abstract galleries. And a third group sat in plain museum offices as a control group. Their heart rates and blood pressure were measured before and after. And here's what happened. More than half of those who viewed classical art had a measurable drop in blood pressure. Those viewing the abstract art, no significant change. Those in the office, nothing at all. It wasn't about which they liked more. In fact, both styles were rated equally enjoyable, but only figurative classical art made the body calmer. Why? Because the brain craves harmony. This healing power goes way beyond just what we see. Classical compositions like Mozart's piano sonatas are steeped in golden ratios. They soothe, mesmerize, and even lower cortisol and strengthen immunity. Meanwhile, chaotic or aggressive music, like heavy metal, spikes tension and hostility, and yet even sorrowful beauty, like tragic symphonies or heartbreaking paintings, can heal because they engage empathy, trigger compassion, and provide a catharsis, releasing emotions we otherwise hold locked inside. So, we've seen how beauty in nature and art can affect us. But what do you think is the highest form of beauty? The single greatest source of real, genuine awe? Well, the answer might surprise you. When scientists asked thousands of people the same question, it wasn't the Grand Canyon, it wasn't a symphony. No, it was something far more personal and way more profound. It turns out that the most powerful and common source of awe is seeing the goodness in other people, so-called moral beauty. Moments of selflessness, of courage, of kindness, of resilience, watching someone protect a child, standing up against injustice, sacrificing for another. This is what moves us the most. And neuroscience backs this up. If you show people an act of compassion, like a child taking care of an injured pigeon, the same beauty center in the brain that would light up when seeing beautiful art also lights up. But compared to just beautiful art, the activation spreads wider into empathy, into social understanding. It hits us on this deeper, more fundamental human level. This shows that the brain reacts to goodness the way it reacts to beauty. Because maybe they're the same. As the philosopher Plotinus said, beauty is a mask that goodness wears. But here's a challenge. Unlike a trip to the Sistine Chapel, everyday beauty doesn't announce itself. It whispers. It hides in plain sight. The rustle of trees on your walk, a melody drifting from a cafe, the smile of someone helping a stranger. You have to intentionally look for beauty to consciously appreciate things. One study found that spending time in nature boosted life satisfaction by a huge 25%. But, and this is a huge but, only for the people who consciously appreciated their surroundings. For those who just walked through it, who were not really paying attention, without wonder, the benefits were almost zero. Beauty doesn't shout. It waits until you allow yourself to hear its whisper. In the end, looking for beauty isn't just for a quick mood boost. Like the philosopher Plato described it over 2,000 years ago, beauty connects us to something bigger than ourselves. It reminds us that there is harmony and goodness and meaning in the world. When we encounter beauty here on Earth, said Plato, it orients us upward and seems to give us wings, even if just for a moment. As we step back, one truth shines through. 
and it's a beauty, it's not a luxury, but a lifeline. It restores, it calms, it heals. From the grand ceilings of the Sistine Chapel to the smallest flower blooming through a crack in the pavement, beauty reaches into our minds and rewires us for clarity, for resilience, and for awe. It's in the symmetry of a seashell, the harmony of a sonata, and as we learned, in the kindness of a stranger. And when we pause to notice it, when we truly let it in, we aren't just spectators, we're participants in something higher and something timeless. So the next time something stops you in your tracks with its grace or wonder, don't just glance and move on. Stay with it because in that moment, your brain isn't just seeing beauty, it's being transformed by it. So what do you find most beautiful? Let me know in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe for more content.